perhaps blowing up those androids may have been a little too hasty on my part. Hmm. Wait a minute. Is it possible? Hey guys, DB right here, and today I'm here. I am here continuing with What If Frieza Became Immortal, just because I've really been enjoying the story, and I've already got what I want to do next pretty much up here in my head, and I just got to get it out now before I forget it and lose, you know, maybe more or less lose interest in it. All right, so. No recap, we're just gonna go straight into it. If um, you guys are just joining us for the first time, I do recommend you um, start from the start. And you know, you can always come back to this video later, or you can simply just watch this and just catch up on the other two whenever. All right. Now that Frieza has conquered the planet Earth and as well as enslaved the human race and, and recruited the last few remaining martial artists into the Freezer Force, I mean, the martial artists that would actually prove to be of some use to him. You know, warriors such as Mercenary Tao, Master Roshi, Chi Chi, and the Ox King. And well, I gotta admit when I did arm um, the previous part, I hadn't even considered Chi Chi and the Ox King being alive. I not intentionally, I just sort of forgot about them because, you know, they don't really do much in any of the series, really. So yeah, to Ox King fans and Chi Chi fans everywhere, I do apologize. And yes, like Roshi, they have been recruited into the Freezer Force and part of um, Roshi's squad. It's kind of hilarious when you think about it, you know, these good guys now suddenly working for a bad guy. But, you know, it's either that or, or die. And, you know, and since, um, now Android 17 and 18 have been defeated, Rushi has, um, and Chi Chi and the Ox King have proven themselves useful to Freezer, you know, simply by training up the Freezer Force, teaching them how to sense energy without scouters, how to raise and lower their power levels, and plus, um, just making them all better fighters and martial artists so they can, which has given them better, you know, key control, and, you know, things like that. And Roshi is um, in the process of training Lord Frieza personally. You know, perhaps it's possible that maybe teaching Frieza the ways of the martial arts, that maybe he can actually change the Emperor from within rather than getting into a fist battle with the Emperor and trying to take him down that way. But Roshi is pretty crafty and he does have a plan to deal with um, Lord Frieza should it really absolutely necessarily come to it. And as far as um, enslaving the Earthlings, Frieza has since, ha does actually treat his enslavement people quite well, actually. I mean, they do actually get paid for their services and things like that, plus they still got their own money and zenny and things like that that they still can use, so all in all, the people of Earth are actually treated relatively well. You know, there was just that big mess concerning the androids that, um, you know, Frieza dealt with in the last part, um, destroying the duo, thanks to the, mostly because of the help of Dr. Briefs happening to know Dr. Giro's address. And well, and thanks to the androids pushing Frieza in the battle, Frieza was able to break into his golden Frieza transformation right there and then. Is he as strong as he is in Dragon Ball Super? Well, no, not quite yet. He's only just hit it. Right now, his power level would be about... To, he heading towards, you know, perfect Cell's power level. Freezer's only just scrapped the scraped the surface of this power. Bypassing, you know, fifth form. Like he does in the original. Or at least there's no reference saying that Frieza actually hit the fifth form before hitting Golden. Anyway, so with that, Frieza realizing how much trouble that these androids gave him, if he hadn't have been immortal, these androids would have, without a doubt, finished him off right th there and then. So luckily he was immortal, and Frieza is actually thinking that maybe he was too hasty getting rid of these androids. 
know, perhaps they could have been of some use to me. Perhaps we could have simply reprogrammed them. You, you know, get rid of Dr. Giraud's programming and instill my will instead. But, as we know, Android 17 and 18 broke free of their master's programming and pretty much did whatever they wanted anyway. So, yeah. But Frieza does have an idea on maybe some possible way that we could maybe rebuild these androids and actually make sure that they do what they are programmed to do. In this case, serve him. And um, he does manage to... Um, Going through Dr. Shiro's labs, he does find the plans for Android 17 and 18. Now, I know, I know, Android 17 and 18 were built from real people. But don't worry, I do have a bit of a solution coming up with, um, for that problem, um, which is about to happen right now. He does go to Dr. Bruce for help and asking him if he could possibly rebuild these androids if he had the schematics. But, however, these plans are just too complex with Dr. Briefs, and, you know, Bulma's not exactly there to help. And this is a bit of a disappointment for Frieza. And he was considering, you know, doing away with Dr. Briefs. However, upon further realization, you know, Dr. Briefs is still doing a good job, providing, you know, new improvements to Frieza's spaceship, as well as, um all the other fine work he is doing at this point. But never you fear, Frieza has another solution. He has heard rumours about another doctor somewhere in the galaxy, and well, he has decided to take a little trip out there to find this doctor, who may be able to rebuild these androids. After all, this guy is from an advanced civilization, and just who is this doctor? Well, I'm sure we've all heard about the Grand Tour and all about that. Yes, we are actually going to be having some elements from Dragon Ball GT in this What If. The Doctor He, because for the Doctor he is referring to, is the great Doctor Mew. The last truly surviving Tuffle. Is it Tuffle? I think it's Tuffle. Now, if you don't know who the Tuffles were, they were the civilization who once had dominion over planet Vegeta before um, the Saiyans had um, pretty much wrecked their own planet, planet Sadala, and pretty much took over planet Vegeta from the topples. Um, up until Dragon Ball GT, we were led to believe the topples were extinct, but no, Dr. Mu had survived and slowly been planning revenge on the Saiyans. I wonder if news of Planet Vegeta's destruction and the complete extinction of the Saiyan race has reached him yet. Or has it? Or has it? So with that, Frieza does indeed take a little trip out to space. With, um... He's got Roshi and his squad with him and, you know, other members of the Frieza Force, including members like Sorbet, and um, Barry Blue and that that other guy who was with Barry Blue and they're off on a nice space journey to find this doctor and more or less they do and Frieza um, informing him you know recognize him as a surviving member of the topple civilization well you don't need to fear those nasty little monkeys anymore I took care of every last one of them and with that, Mew, Dr. Mew actually decides to build these two androids, to recreate these two androids for Freezer. You know, no charge, because get... You got rid of the Saiyans? Well, I'll tell you, sir, you have done the galaxy a great service this day you have. So I'll tell you what, I will build your androids for free. And do, do you possibly have a little something from their DNA so we can actually build them from the same scale as you, if you, if you wish. And Freeze is going, as a matter of fact, yes, I do have a little something. After, um, the battle with, um, with the androids, um, it's 
Frieza had decided it was a good idea to go back and see if he could find something that belonged to the androids, anything that could ma possibly make rebuilding them easier. And well, he found Android 18's hand and the um, ascot belonging to Android 17, which has Android 17's DNA all over it. And well, with that, yes, Dr. Mew is able to clone Android 17 and 18 from that and putting in Freezer's programming exactly the way Freezer wants, creating a Freezer Force edition of Android 17 and 18. Meanwhile, back on Earth, there is um, a new crisis now beginning to brew on planet Earth in the form of Imperfect Cell. Imperfect Cell, who has arrived from some other timeline, from some other parallel universe or you know something confusing like that we still get imperfect cell running around and um, he is at the moment absorbing any human he can as well as um, absorbing freezer force soldiers and killing them and quite frankly this is actually making cell stronger than he is in the original timeline because remember these soldiers have all had martial art and key energy training from Master Roshi, so this Freezer Force is actually stronger, a bit more formidable than the original, as well as, you know, being a step up from your everyday human race, which Cell was absorbing in the original timeline. And this actually comes to a key component in making Cell stronger in this original part. And at this point, Cell is looking for the androids, but can't seem to really be finding them anywhere. And I think that is actually where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So, what do you guys think? Do you guys um, like this additional part that I've done? Um, will these androids actually serve Freezer obediently? Will the programming actually work this time? And, um... What of Dr. Mew? Will Dr. Mew actually become a part of the Freezer Force himself? You know, he doesn't have to live on that planet anymore. He could just be a part of Freezer Force and do all his work for Freezer. And Freezer's not going to poo-poo his research. And, um... Yeah, and, you know, what's going to happen now that, um... Cell has now joined the fray? All this and more, next time when we continue this what if. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and, um, you know, leave your um, opinions, you know, I wanna know what you guys think. And um, just a quick reminder, um, don't forget to be, if you um, wanna share some fan art from some of your favorite what ifs that I do on this channel, don't hesitate to follow me on Twitter, the link's in the description, and you can always tweet to me with the hashtag dbryart. You know, if I get enough um, fan art, I can do a video series on that, talk, discussing your fan art, uh, whatever concepts you guys have come up with in that fan art, and what I like like about it. And yeah, you know, we could do a series on that, on fan art. Alright, so thank you, thank you so much for being a part of this, and, you know, I will see you guys again next time. I'm always grateful when you guys jump on and watch these, you know, it's... It makes me happy and it makes me want to get on the camera and keep doing it. Alright, I'll catch you later, see you next time.